super special episode of Build Bio today. Let's just get right into it. Mr. Block, nobody cares about you today. It's all about this. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> this is way more exciting than you at the moment. Good. So I like it better than me too. Yeah. I'm going to just start with the <laughs> hardest question. This or the unicorn? You're supposed to say I love my kids in all different ways. <laughs> <laughs> The RS200 is my favorite all-time whatever car. The Hunicorn is my favorite car to drive. I love this thing. We didn't build this to be a race car. The dimensions on it aren't ideal for what I do. It is big. My actual working space, the cockpit inside, is actually quite small, but the thing itself is, is huge. It's very fun to drive. The sound and the power delivery and everything about it is very unique. But man, trying to compare it to the Hunicorn, that's just not fair. Man, I think we may have started this show off right. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with this thing is we took everything that we learned from building and running the Hunicorn to make this thing way better than the Hunicorn. This thing doesn't drive like the Hunicorn, but the way that it's put together is so much more unique and so much better for us to go do Gymkhana demos to, you know, the filming that we did for Gymkhana 10. In that way, it is actually one of the most unique things that we've ever built. So quickly, what is it? <laughs> it is a 1977 Ford F-150. And you may ask, why did I pick that particular year? It's because I grew up in a Ford family and that was the truck that my dad had when I was a young teenager, uh, all the way through to when I was 17 or 18. But I learned to drive in that truck. I raced my dirt bike out of that truck. And really I did my first burnout in that truck and probably one of my first jumps in a vehicle in that truck. I just always loved that shape. You know, it, it really had something you know special to do with my childhood. And also just reminds me of my dad who passed away about 25 years ago and it was something he loved. So it really reminds me of my dad, you know, with, with us having so much success with the Hunicorn, we wanted to, to make a Hunicorn out of a truck, you know, a Hunicorn style. And it, it's, it's really, for me, it was, it was the natural fit. We wanted to put a truck type engine in it and we went to Ford and said, hey Ford, what would you like us to use? Obviously, I'm a Raptor guy. Raptor is my daily driver that I drive the most and the engine in that is a twin turbo V6. So they wanted to tie into that technology that they have. So that's why we ended up with a twin turbo V6. It is a very specific engine that came from the Ford GT program. Before the Ford GT was announced, they started testing this engine uh, in a Daytona prototype. Well, that program was their precursor in testing to then do the Ford GT that they would then go on and win Le Mans with. So this is physically a piece of the puzzle that helped Ford win Le Mans. Yes, it's kind of odd that this truck in a 70s body has a piece of the Ford GT program inside it. And they were great to work with and they actually designed this intake manifold all based around those specs of what power we wanted out of the engine. So this intake manifold was specifically designed for this truck, for the power that we needed, and it was actually 3D printed. It's grown from metal. Yeah, it's grown from metal, which so is basically, wild. Basically, if you've seen Terminator 2, <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, that's the engineering that went into this. Yeah, yeah, and I am not the person to be talking about that. But on a design side, it was actually really cool to work with them. They wanted our input on how this thing actually looked. And a big part of that is because with growing the metal, you can do things that isn't possible with a cast or, or with a milling machine, that sort of thing. So they wanted to push the envelope of what was possible with the design because you could not make this any other way besides that 3D type printing. It's incredible. It's so unique. And the time and effort behind that Ford Performance put on that for us is really quite amazing. Are you ready to dive into all the technical details? Um, sure, I'm, I would love to watch someone else talk about that. Because <laughs> I suck at those details. How about we bring in Chris? Hey guys, Chris, how you doing? thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me here. Chris yeah. is with Detroit Speed and they built this wonderful project for us and they did an amazing job. Thank you, So thank we you. brought him out today so he could talk through the technical details. Cause like I said, I suck at it. 
anyway. You, you, handle, you handle the driving, we'll handle the rest. Yeah. All right, I'll leave you two to it. <laughs>We gave you guys basically drawings yes. and we said, take these drawings and convert it into this. But we also told you that we wanted some of the panels to be made of aluminum and yes. a bunch of other things. So let's go through the first thing I think that stands out the most, which is how wide this thing is. Yes. You guys had to think about how you could actually build this and still have it go into a trailer. So well, let's talk about the flares and, and how you guys set that up to start. Well, basically we just uh, took a full measurement and actually 3D the truck itself and just got a full overall measurement from it. And literally from side to side, we're over 79 inches wide. Most trailers that fit through the, between the wheel wells are right at the 80 inch mark. So we had to really kind of look beyond that and say, okay, it's gonna be a take apart truck and we'll rebuild it when we get to the site. Very cool. Yep. The wing as people We've seen this know that the wings are really important because it gives us a proximity point without tearing the back of the truck off. <laughs> exactly, so exactly. This thing actually scrapes some paint yeah. off the side of a car. We, we actually built one by hand first and after we did that, we basically took those measurements and then we used a local company to actually uh, electronically bend them uh, and actually laser cut them out. And then even up front, I mean, you guys, you made New bumpers for us out of carbon. Yep, carbon bumpers, carbon splitter, and then a brush divider across the bottom of it. Basically factory grills, factory lights, uh, factory emblems. We just went through and, and did some uh, high temp stair coating mm -hmm. to kind of give it a nice cool feel and look to it. And it's extremely durable. I mean, yeah. other than taking sandpaper to it, it's not gonna chip or damage or anything mm -hmm. like that right there. So it doesn't work really well with scuffing, but uh, <laughs> other than that, you know, it's pretty good. All right. so. The next thing we're going to talk about is something that I'm probably most excited to talk about. And what I think is kind of like, it's the hidden gem of the truck, which is the chassis you guys built. It's what you guys are really known for is kind of developing that stuff. But the part that is so interesting is that you actually made it modular. Yeah. yeah. So, and this was the thing that blew me away when I came to the shop is that each of these are different pieces. So in total, how many pieces does the chassis comprise? Of? Well, the chassis actually comprises of, you got, the tail section, rear suspension section, the monocoque chassis, and then you've got the front suspension components. So all of those are joined together by Clevis system, which we did this one here just because if in case there was an issue back here, uh, you actually have space. By issue, you mean if, if we hit something or can hit something. Yeah. When he hits something. <laughs> <laughs> so each one of these components are actually interchangeable. Uh, when you guys came to us, you wanted to build something so that when an issue happens, you want to be able to get it switched really quickly, uh, almost like a pit stop type scenario, because that's basically what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're getting it back and on the on the road just as soon as you possibly can, because you've got you know staff all over the place waiting, so let's, roads let's, down, let's and everything. Let's walk so. us through. So we get a little too close to something, mm -hmm. we tear the back half of the vehicle off, mm -hmm. and it just it damages the whole rear section. Like, yeah. What? It, how quickly can we get through that and change that? Uh, those changes there can be done in 30, 45 minutes in the tail section as aspect of it. And that's sheet metal as well. Each one of these sheet metal pounds that are here have anchor points and all those anchor points are actually adjustable so that you can move things up, down, in, out, whatever you need to do to get the body alignment back looking like it should look, you know, for filming purposes. It might be a little tweaked someplace, mm -hmm. but you can still get it to where it looks like it's supposed to look. Uh, if easier. it gets really damaged, and this is really gnarled up, then in turn, basically a bolt here, bolt there, two clevis bolts here, because the system actually ties itself in together just like this. So you take those bolts loose, that whole section comes off and it's replaceable. There's a spare sitting, it's already been powder coated, loaded up, ready to go. And then the same thing for the next section. Same thing for so the next we section. we had a major impact like with the suspension, ended up like tearing off a subframe mount or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, you would end up just removing all of that. Stuff. Exactly. Had a couple of issues when during filming in Texas, and we tried to design our product so that it does have a give point. Basically, hit a curb, snapped a tie rod mount off of one of our uprights. Upright stayed intact, absolutely strong as ever, but the part that was made to break actually broke, so that it basically snapped off and didn't tear up anything else. Now, if it was such a really hard, heavy impact and it bent any of these components here, then you can change up that whole section. One of the other things too that I noticed is you guys are actually using a lot of parts 
from the front and rear suspension that are similar, right? Yeah, using parts that are the similar, not just to you guys, but to us as well. Why re-engineer something you already have engineered? Literally, the upper control arms and lower control arms, uh, with a couple of small modifications, are the same control arms we sell off the shelf. Same way with our uprights. These uprights that you see are basically same front and rear, and the suspension components on the A-arms are the same front and rear. That way your spares, you don't have to have a set of front spares and a set of rear spares. You have one set of spares that you can actually utilize on the truck at any given time. You're totally underestimating our ability to wad a car up. <laughs> then you just buy more spares. <laughs> Let's talk about the body. So the cab is steel. The cab, cab is the cab original, is steel. original Actually, cab. Actually, the cab is the original cab. I mean, the cab still is basically a venable you know, Ford cab. The inner door shells are actually still sheet metal. We did skin the, the doors and the bedsides are all handmade aluminum. Because that is one of, that is that one of the features. Quick. Yep. We do have the aluminum doors on right there, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. So these are the it's the actual metal. Did you guys go in and actually yep. we dimple actually, dye it? We as actually well? dimple dyed all this around here for a couple of reasons. One's the cool factor of course, but honestly it actually reinforces this because you had to take this structure off the original metal structure off, and then we actually riveted on. The, you see these rivets here? We actually uh, flat riveted every panel onto this, yeah. every part of the so panel. Yeah, yeah, you can so. actually see this. You did that, so these bed sides also? Yep, bed, bed sides are all aluminum. You can kind of see how we pieced it in together, and seams in here, uh, hammer formed it all the way around on the, for the tail lights. This is so intricate back in here where the tail lights are. The number of man hours on this bed and, and the aluminum is phenomenal. So. These are definitely for show. <laughs> <laughs> we do uh, have a set of steel bed sides yeah. that we run for yeah. filming. Yeah. So when a tire explodes, it doesn't completely destroy them. Exactly so. right, yeah. And some yeah. of you might be asking like, why did we do aluminum? You know, the Hunicorn was, a lot of it was carbon fiber, which makes sense. It's lightweight, it's a good race application. But we wanted to actually connect this a lot to the current uh, F-150s that Ford builds and the current F-150s are aluminum so we said hey let's actually make this aluminum as well and there's a few other items that stem over from the original or the current F-151 being like this backup camera yep. which actually is kind of a nice feature because it's a real pain in the ass to back up race cars when you're wearing harnesses and you can't get out and another one is it actually has remote start which for those of you who saw the early preview of Junkana on Amazon know how that works as well. Let's actually dive into uh, the office space. Here. <laughs> kind of talk about what you guys had to do to actually build a cab that worked like a race car. Basically with the cab being what it is and where the transmission engine has to actually sit, your drive line that goes through the front section, we can't get the engine but so far forward. Well, I've got so much space to work with as far as engine depth and then bell housing and then trans transmission. All that stuff takes up space. So in essence, the engine is actually back underneath the firewall, back under the dash is where the engine actually is located. Yeah, it's sitting so, right here. It's, but yeah. there's still a good size footwell. Mm -hmm. Is that actually like a, a towing brake controller? A brake well, it's got a hitch on it, right? I mean, if it's got a trailer. I, I never even realized that before. <laughs> it's like every time I look at this, I find another little detail, which is one of the reasons why we went with these guys, because it's like you guys, you guys are the detail kings. Yeah. Like that's yeah. definitely your thing. And it's super cool to see that in a race car, because I think a lot of times on race cars, like we avoid details, things like doing this, but not just for design, but actually having like a functional it, purpose. It's all about purpose and functionality. It's just like every scene that you see inside on the interior trim panels, all those panels actually are removable. So when they have to do a quick change at filming, if there happen to be a mechanical failure, all this stuff comes out. So all of these panels come out, but those panels are aluminum. So they're flimsy. They don't look, they don't hold their, right. so we basically you know, rib all those panels to give it some rigidity. And that's actually a really big thing. So when we went to Detroit Speed, we said, this isn't a race truck. We're not gonna go compete in it. We're gonna film with it, which means that it needs to be film friendly. And film friendly usually means that we need to be able to replace a transmission in 15 minutes because it breaks and we don't have enough time to wait for overnight for it to change because we've got a street closed, we've got police locking down this or whatever, and it has to happen ASAP. And it was one of the things the mechanics said that they, if they could have a vehicle that they could work on easier. So you guys actually, when you pull that panel, there's a handle built to help pull the transmission. Correct. Basically, even the seats are quick pinned in, so you pull quick yeah. release pins to actually re remove the seats to get them out of the way quickly. You can see that right here, which is 
for someone who doesn't normally fit in vehicles and needs to be able to move their seats extremely far back, I kind of like that a lot. Yeah. The same scenario with all the panels on the inside, they're all quick release fasteners, removable, uh, quick release fasteners for the hydraulics for the handbrake. And then I see you guys have, you had some fun with the dash. Yep, had some, had some fun with the dash. We've got the, the Bosch Motorsports system uh, set up in it. So it being a truck, back to what we were talking about, it's got a trailer hitch in it. It's got mm -hmm. a brake controller on it for the trailer. You know. It's real quick so you see it power yep. up. And then uh, we even took our, our normal buttons that we normally use for, we have a boost control. We now have a screen control so you can actually toggle your, uh, toggle your screens and stuff off of it. Mm -hmm. Off the screens on the other side. So you can see the far right screen. It's your gear, sele gear selection lever. It goes through diagnostics on the computer system. And of course, the Ford Sync. Nice. Oh. I didn't even realize we had a little logo placement in there. Quite nice. Well, of course. <laughs> and I like that the boost control is very simple. Yeah. It's a turbo. Turn it up makes it better. We basically had to just make it 11, just leave it there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much Always what Always at 11. Always at 11, so yeah. Always yeah. more power. Yeah, exactly. I know you guys didn't actually build the wheels, but we have on here, we've got some, mm -hmm. some big, big, big 5.2s. What, what size tire do we have on here? What is 315, 3520s. Yeah. It's a big piece of rubber on there on the front and square all around. To stop those, some, some Willwoods. Big old six piston Willwoods. With some huge, huge rotors. How big are those rotors? Uh, 14s. 14s, wow. Let's pop the hood because I think it'd be good to look at the front of the chassis and how that all comes together. <laughs> There's a lot of packaging. Right, before we jump ahead into the engine, let's talk about the rest of the chassis. So, right. Same thing up here. Same thing up here. We have a clevis point here and a clevis point down there. Yep. Same design as it is in the rear. Let's get into the heart of this thing. So the engine. It's one of uh, Roush Yates and, and Ford Racing's versions of a DP prototype engine. It actually developed 917 horsepower and okay. over 17, 700 foot-pounds of torque off of it. Now, and that being said, with the Garrett turbos on it. And are these the same turbos that they were running on the prototype? They are a uh, Garrett turbo that was designed specifically for this boost amount okay. for this engine. Because we turned up the boost a little bit. Yeah, we turned the boost up a little bit. Turned the boost up a little bit. The radiator is actually located in the back. This is actually the uh, uh, air cooler, charge cooler. So, and one thing I want to point out to everyone: have a fan system. I was going to say you don't normally see intercoolers with a fan system. Yeah, and yeah. I've seen these things run. Like, what? What's kind of what kind of air is that thing pushing? Because it seems like it could suck your hand through it. The amount of CFM that's pulled through there is absolutely phenomenal. And the goal of that was. You realize sometimes Ken's just doing donuts, not getting any airflow, so we just need to be able to create airflow at a standstill. It's a 60 degree V6 aluminum heads. It's got direct injection, but they went through multiple testings and multiple dyno testings to make sure that it got to the horsepower mark that it wanted to in that intake and retained the look that actually had in the renderings as well. One of the things I also love is you guys actually made this a functional vehicle. So like the headlights work, something yeah. not all of all our right. cars to do. You actually have a you have horns. You have to. You have I mean, horn. It's a truck. It's a truck. A truck you know, has to have got, a good exactly. horn. Exactly. Let's talk, uh, let's move to the back and actually talk about what cools this engine because there's a lot more than just coolant running through the back of here. You've got a full oil cooling system as yep. well and, yep. and all of that. And that's all been moved back here to give you more space up front, but walk us through yep. that. It is a dry sump system. So you have all passages from uh, back to front and front to back that basically gets it going back and forth. And that runs the under the vehicle system. or through that the runs, cab? That actually runs inside the tunnel. It's actually hard lined through the tunnel from the back of the cab all the way up to the front. And then it's Very soft cool. line whipped up to there. So right. Everything on here is built to be taken apart rather quickly. Rather quickly. Put yeah. back together without much bleeding or like refilling needed. As much as you can, yeah. And of course the radiator, uh, same scenario with the fans, uh, a brushless fan system. It's kind of cool when you watch some of the video and it's really rolling the smoke off the tires. You can see the fans where they're kicked in. The fans actually help grow that smoke even as a bigger, taller cloud. So. Yep. This is like a small little thing, but like what mounts are the, you guys have the KW Reservoir is being held on by I think, some mount I haven't seen before. I know that's probably something out of the NASCAR world yeah, I haven't it's, seen. It's, or... it's something, we, something we use in the pro touring world. Let's get this thing up on the lift and look at the rest of it underneath. <laughs> so, Ken, you're back. 
Yeah. I never get to see the vehicles from this angle. <laughs> but you know usually what? when you see the bottom side of your vehicle, it's the end of a bad day, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> 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 down One thing I love about seeing it from here, though, is if you ever wonder why the engine is set back on the Hunicorn in this car, mm -hmm. it's because of this thing right here. Yep. It's the, the front diff that the drivetrain has to come off the gearbox in the middle of the car. The engine is set back a certain distance because of how it's got to sit behind the front diff. Amazing. I'm actually stoked to be here right now. See it this <laughs> well, way. Chris, you want to walk Ken through what you guys did? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the cool part about looking under here, oh, too. You can actually see. The, so here's all the lines we talked about yep. before. So, you, so all of your oil and coolant. Everything passed yeah. through. Fuel I think it's just like this piece. It. Like, this piece is rad. Yeah, of course, that's all machined and mm -hmm. doing all that sub stuff there basically protects Ken inside the cockpit. There's less likely to be a leak in this than there is in this. Right. And if something like that was to happen to leak, and he's got a firewall yeah, between him exactly. and the fire. Exactly. So it's another protection level to it. And I appreciate that. You're very welcome. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah. Hey, we won't repeat business. So, yeah. You, know. <laughs> you can see the clevis is a lot better here too. Yep. Seeing how that actually that whole front piece disconnects. And you can also look under here too as well. You can see how the suspension actually has three height changes to it. And you can also change these slugs, have different degrees of slug inputs. So not only can you wow. change the height of the control arm, but you also change the depth of the control arm in and out. Oh, look at that. As well. Very cool. It's all about so you guys just build a different slug and now Just have can... different slugs. You, you guys have so a So Ken, if you package. want to stance this thing out real crazy, we could like push this all the way out and have you just riding on insult, inside <laughs> sidewall. You could be hot boy in no time. <laughs> How's that work with all-wheel drive? Just so you know, <laughs> that wasn't the thought. <laughs> ask, ask all the vaping Subaru community. He just threw up inside his body. That's not the thought. That is not, not the thought. I also want to point out, every one of your bolts only shows one thread outside like there was some math in that because none of my cars that i've built look like that usually i've got like a bolt that's sticking out that far look so. and learn, look and learn. <laughs> by the way I, I know that like it's up here for a specific reason but have you guys talked about the wheels and tires we did well it was also great for 1552 to build that for us that's not mm -hmm. something that they build and it was built specifically for this and toyo you know had a great tire for us for this because yeah. it was a very specific build they happen to make like a suv tire that that fit quite well on the it this truly size. just makes the look of the truck because yep. it still gives it car proportions well chris thank you uh very much for the walkthrough on this thing you oh, guys yes, sir. absolutely did a great job we are more than stoked with what this has become one thing i would like to say though is to, is to thank ken personally to say thank you for allowing us to be part of this project we have really enjoyed it well and i'm lucky i get awesome. to work with great people so yeah. thank you very much thank you Anything you want to remind people of, Ken? Uh, well, there's this very nice video that this thing is featured in called Gymkhana 10. I tear up a very fun little town called Shamrock in Texas, and it goes on YouTube in just a few days. So check the Hoonigan uh, YouTube channel, and I uh, hope you enjoy it.